Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Trauma Recovery University. I am your host, Athena Moberg, and this is my amazing co-host, Bobby Parrish. Tonight is very exciting for many, many reasons. Bobby and I are in the exact same room together, only in different areas of the room while we are doing our live broadcast tonight. Normally, I am in Hawaii, and she is in Dallas, Texas, but I am here at her house, and uh, she's just the perfect hostess, by the way. Um, we want to welcome you um, on a more professional note. We want to welcome you to Trauma Recovery University. This broadcast is live every week, and it is because of you, the amazing survivor, who tweet in your questions and email us and send us every kind of correspondence letting us know exactly what you would want to hear about and learn about. That is why we are here. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I want to start off tonight's broadcast before I do our normal public service announcements. And I want to give a very, very, very special welcome to all of the people tuning in live right now, tweeting in questions and watching us from what we know right now, I think it's three different countries. I want to say a very special shout out to Stacy, the best Stacy ever on Twitter, and her entire group of brave survivors. Tonight is their first meetup live in Victoria, Canada. And I want to give a very awesome, brave kudos to you. Shout out to our viewers in the UK, where it's two in the morning and here you are, you guys are rock stars. And then, of course, all of our amazing people here in the United States that are tuning in. We just love you guys, and we are so excited that this uh, live broadcast is growing and reaching more of you. Um, we have people that are tuning in um, in so many different areas of the world, and we're just grateful. So if you are listening to this on a podcast platform such as iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, or Spreaker, we do want to remind you that this is a video broadcast. You can find the videos on YouTube by going to youtube.com forward slash Trauma Recovery University TV, or you can find us on any Roku device, or if you have a Roku TV, you can find us just by searching for Trauma Recovery University, or if you just want to tune in anytime, any week, anywhere, you can go to bit.ly forward slash trauma recovery you and you can see whatever our most recent episode is or you can go to view our entire library of videos over at YouTube or on Roku TV. Now just as a thank you for being one of our loyal listeners or viewers or subscribers or as we always say awesome survivors we want to give you complimentary access to our entire library of downloadable PDF resources which you may print and keep and share with other survivors. We are giving you that permission to do that. Um, it says on the bottom that you can't unless you have our permission, but we're giving you permission. So um, there's no catch, it's free. We just want you to have access to our entire library of downloadable PDF resources to help you in your recovery. Perhaps you have a binder or something and you can print them out and put those in there. So um, a very special welcome as well to anyone that is tuning in from CyberDust. Uh, which if you guys are not familiar with CyberDesk, I do want to uh, make you aware of it. It is a confidential private platform where you can communicate and all of your communication um, deletes itself, disappears immediately within 30 seconds. It never hits a server. It never has your name attached to it. It's completely private. And the app was developed and um, promoted or um, funded by Mark Cuban. And um, who is right here in Dallas. And um, I think that's all for my public service announcements, but I do want to turn this over to my amazing partner, Bobby Farish, who will give us an update on um, our live events that we have coming up, and as well as our anthology that will be, of course, um, published and released during No More Shame November. And it is written by all of you brave, amazing survivors. So all of those support groups and meetups out there, like your group, Stacey, um, you guys are welcome to go to TraumaRecoveryUniversity.com, click on book, and then look at the uh, guidelines on what it is that you need to do to submit your story. It could be a work of poetry. It could be your memoir or piece of your memoir. It doesn't cost you anything. It's completely free, and we publish it for you. And our incredible publisher, Book Trope, is out of Seattle. 
I want Bobby to fill in all the blanks on that and tell everybody about that as well as our live events. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Bobby. Take it away, Bobby. Hi, guys. I'm a little crooked. I took, <laughs> I wanted to show you um, the book from last November, the anthology. Take my fingers out of the way there because Miss Athena did the wonderful cover design. And look, there's a back to it too. Um, <laughs> so she did the whole thing. Um, and I took it out from underneath my computer. So now I'm just a little lopsided. So you don't look lopsided at all, not to me. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, this was our first one from last year. We self published, although after we published, we had two publishers come to us and say, We really want to um, publish this. It's awesome. We love it. And so, Book Trope is going to be republishing the first one, and then they're going to pick up our subsequent anthologies, and we're so excited about that. So this is an opportunity for you to be published, if you've been published before, to be published again. So we invite you to submit your essays and your poetry. Uh, this is nonfiction. We're not looking for stories. We're looking for your true experience as a survivor. And this year's theme, last year the theme was discovering true. So discovering your truth and your capacity to tell your story and the benefits that that had. This year we're going to talk about discovering together, meaning what has it meant to you? How has it helped your recovery? What has it been like to come together with other survivors in community? I know that for those of us who have been active in the No More Shame community, in the traumatic Trauma Recovery University community for the last year and a half have experienced just phenomenal changes. And we want to see how your personal story has changed because you've come into community. It doesn't have to be our community. It can be any kind of community that you have um, joined in terms of your recovery. For example, uh, Miss Stacy's support group there in Victoria um, and how uh, getting together with other survivors is empowering, changing, and healing. And then we have an awesome live event that's going to be the first weekend in June in Atlanta. And Ms. Athena is spearheading that. And we are so thrilled to invite you to Atlanta for this live event. Um, it will be the, the full day of June 6th. And then for those who wish to attend, there will be a pre-event on the 5th and an after event on the 7th. And we invite you to um, look at the website. Athena, is it your high potential live or just highpotentiallive.com? It's a highpotentiallive.com. And um, I haven't really finished the website. I just barely started building it and did not finish building the back end of the website. So um, I the, just forgive the construction, basically. My, my everything was awesome and I had coded everything to be black and red and somehow my orange faded in again and I didn't finish the, the speaker bios. And I just added a new two new speakers this week now that I'm here in Dallas. Um, I have one gentleman named Kevin that has agreed to speak and another gentleman named Brian who has agreed to speak. There is a different gentleman, a third, named Sam who is considering speaking. And um, I'm getting ready to invite another gentleman by the name of Matt. So I um, don't want to tell you any last names yet. I just want to sort of keep the suspense going. It's going to be an incredible event. And it, the topic of this conference, the entire reason we are beginning this annual conference every year in Atlanta is to discuss that you, as survivors of whatever it is you're surviving, whether it is um, you're surviving um, your teens and it's been incredibly horrific, or if you're, survive, you're a survivor of abuse, or you've been incarcerated, or you grew up in a disadvantaged home, or um, you're an orphan, or whatever it is that you are going through that is difficult, this conference is to encourage you that you are able to reach your highest potential regardless of where you come from, whether that's incarceration or deaths in the family or Holocaust or whatever it might be. There are, there are so many um, difficult life experiences out there. Uh, here on our live broadcast, we usually speak specifically to the adults who have survived 
childhood abuse, more specifically sexual abuse. However, there are some incredible speakers that are going to tell you about different things that they have survived and how they've overcome to reach their highest potential and to be successful. So um, please be watching out for that. The VIP passes are going to be for the Friday night before with um, an, just an amazing VIP event with all the speakers and um, photos and some cocktails or appetizers or what have you. And then on the following morning on Sunday, there'll be a, a farewell also, which will be for VIPs only. Otherwise, if you want to come just for the one day, it's going to be on June 6th, which is Saturday. And that's going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. And we um, will be finalizing the actual location. Uh, it's going to be in downtown, not in uptown. And I believe it's going to be at either the Sheraton or the Marriott. I'm not 100% sure yet. I will let you guys know on the website. So um, thanks for mentioning that, Bobby. I completely forgot to mention that earlier. So <laughs> No. Um, we're just so happy to have the opportunity to meet with you personally. We're working really hard to get donors and sponsors for our events so that we can meet with you personally more often. Um, it's great to be able to talk to you guys every week this way. It's wonderful to be able to have the Roku TV channel, the YouTube channel to interact with you. But you're telling us, and we feel it's important to, to have live events where you can not just interact with speakers and leaders and teachers, but you can interact with each other. That opportunity to have in-person community with other for survivors is for us so important and so we're really working on that um, we have a page that we're going to be putting up looking for people who are going to be sponsors for the individual events and we'll get you that information later on too so um, I think that's about it. We're still ironing out details for the Portland event, the end of June. Stay tuned for that. Hop on over to TraumaRecoveryUniversity.com and subscribe to the newsletter. And I promise as soon as we have details, we will pass them along to you. Yeah. So before we, um, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say that's it. Yay. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to tell you that I know that you knew that, um, one of our gals in the UK was on live. We have actually both Susan and Janet in there tweeting us right now. So we have we officially have an entire global audience that is tuning in live for our weekly broadcast, and I could not be more humbled and grateful. So um, Susan is asking, what is this week's event? Or what is this week's topic? She completely missed it. So um, Susan, this is for you. This week's topic is self-care and hygiene. So um, quite, the, uh, quite the heated and fast-moving chat this morning slash afternoon. Um, our UK chat was at 12 noon uh, Dallas time. And normally, you know, in Hawaii, I'm, it's 7 a.m. But I was here and had already been in the middle of my crazy, crazy day when I was out meeting people. So um, Bobby, let's talk about chat um, today, our UK chat. Yes, it was, you know, we know there are so many after effects from having been abused, specifically having been sexually abused, but I think so many of us don't connect things that seem to be not directly related to our abuse as being an after effect of our abuse. And I think for most people this morning, that's the, that was the big thing is they did not realize that the struggles they were having with self-care and personal hygiene were related to their abuse. Yes. And yet, um, you almost universally, the survivors we talk to struggle with some aspect of hygiene, whether it's bathing, showering, um, <laughs> regularly changing your clothes, uh, brushing your teeth, washing your face, doing your laundry, which isn't exactly hygiene, but in that same token, basically taking care of the needs of our body. Um, and, but it is, it is so related to your abuse, especially those of you who were physically or sexually abused. And that's because our bodies were what was part of the abuse and taking care of our bodies then um, something that was violated and abused as a child can become quite a challenge. I have. Athena, um, what did you? Yeah, 
um, right before we went on the air, um, I was mentioning to you we have a we have a new member of our family. Um, I um, am not one hundred percent certain um, if I will mention anybody's name because this person has not decided to um, come out and tweet publicly and participate in chats or anything. So um, we had private messaging together. Uh, we've communicated a lot on Cyberdesk and then today in private message on Twitter. And um, what this gal was saying was, oh my gosh, I have been having issues with this since my attack. I can't believe this is normal. I am sitting here stunned. And that was halfway through our chat today because she was, she was, following our chat, which is so awesome. We have so many of you guys that follow us, and I know it's called lurking, but I mean, you're following it. You're reading our, you're reading our feed, and it's completely brave for you to do that. So um, bravo to you guys that are watching and reading along, because it takes a lot of courage. It and does. It really does, because for you to be reading it, you know that you're going to be triggered. You're going to be reading it and going, oh, your mouth's going to get dry, your heart rate's going to be elevated, and you're going to be like, oh my goodness. So, um, I responded to her and just thanked her for watching our feed and let her, letting her know that, yes, it's very common for all survivors of abuse, specifically sexual abuse, to have trouble with hygiene, personal, personal hygiene, and in self-care. And her response was, but my assault had nothing to do with water. And, you know, I used to beat myself up kind of on that note you guys not that not that um this gal our our new family member is beating herself up maybe she's not maybe she's just like having a light bulb moment but um i used to beat myself up for not having the easiest time showering and not really being able to um, have like a regular bathing routine without feeling horrifically triggered and having horrible flashbacks and having an elevated heart rate and just being um, it's, it's just, it's showering is so difficult for me on so many different levels and for so many different reasons that I'll share later on in this broadcast when Bobby gives me the cue. So, um, we just want to encourage you guys that watching our feed and even watching our live broadcast here is so brave and we just are grateful for each of you for messaging us privately or publicly or what have you and just letting us know that these broadcasts make a difference for you and that the light bulbs are coming on and that you are getting farther and farther and farther along in your recovery journey in part because you are participating in community which is right here even though it's not physical community like our awesome best Stacy ever on Twitter um, has a, a support group physically there and they're all watching live right now as though they all got together to watch Friends or Grey's Anatomy. Like they're watching us. I feel pretty special. I feel like a celebrity. So, but you can honestly consider this community. We have private groups. We invite you in. We introduce you to all these other survivors and we have rules, very stringent rules in our groups that no one's allowed to, you know, everybody is very supportive is what we're trying to say. We're not like meanies or anything, but everybody's very supportive. They're kind, they're respectful, they're courteous, and there's never any bashing or weirdness that goes on in our groups. Everybody is just so loving and kind to one another. So we do want to welcome you into those, those areas of community. Thank you so much for sharing that. It is always awesome when we share something that is related to abuse and people go, oh, wow, I had no idea. And the important thing about that is because like Athena said, and I agree, I, I've had shame attached to, um, you know, my issues about hygiene for the longest time because it's not sp something that we're supposed to struggle with. It's supposed to be something that you just automatically do. You have no problem with it. Um, you do it, it's over, and everything's wonderful. But when you understand how it's related to your abuse, then it releases some of the shame and we feel better. And then we can set up a strategy for dealing with the issue. And that's the reason that we come to you every week, that we honestly believe that education about trauma and the aspects of trauma and the aspects of the after effects of trauma are empowering. And when you know what you're going through and why you're going through it, then you can set up a path to heal and recover. 
but when you have no clue what's going on and why, how are you supposed to set up a path to recover? But now we're here to empower you, for you to take control of your recovery journey and set down the steps and make the plan for how you're going to get from the place you're in now to a place of uh, greater peace, greater happiness, greater contentedness, um, you know, fewer flashbacks, less depression, less PTSD. Um, that's why we're here. And tonight, so we're talking specifically about uh, personal hygiene and how it is an aspect of self-care. And what we're talking about are things like, um, you know, always wearing clean clothing, having your teeth brushed, your face washed, your hair washed, um, you're showered or bathed. Um, and again, the reason these are so hard is because some of us don't have a really good relationship with our body because our body was intimately involved in our abuse. So not only are we not comfortable in our own skin, but we may not be very fond of our bodies because there may be a sense of it having betrayed us or it being attached to our abuser. And sometimes there's a lot of hatred of our body, um, self-loathing about our body. We talked about this a little bit when we talked about body image a couple weeks ago. So if you have not watched that Hangout yet, I encourage you uh, to to watch that one because we talk about some of these same issues in terms of our relationship with our body. And other things that some of us, for example, were abused while we were bathing or showering. Um, and that just makes bathing or showering a horrific experience for us. Um, survivors also have a lot of issues surrounding their mouth. And this can be particularly so if you were forced to engage in oral sex while you were being abused. Uh, we struggle with appointments at the dentist. We struggle with brushing our teeth. We struggle with getting um, the care that we need to get this morning in chat. A lot of people talked about avoiding the dentist, um, having an issue, knowing we have an issue, but not seeking care. Almost universally, we all said, um, I grind my teeth, I clench my jaw when I'm anxious. So issues around our mouth, and tonight specifically we're talking about brushing our teeth, um, a problem. It's just, it's hard. And so if you struggle with these things, we really don't want you to feel ashamed. Okay, we want you to know that it's related to your abuse and you can take steps to make this better. Um, so like Athena talked about earlier, go over to traumarecovery.com, click on the button that says downloadables, and find the one page. We do a one page for every Google Hangout that we do, TV episode has a one page. And that one page of information is distilled education about the topic and steps that you can take today to feel better. Um, as survivors ourselves, Athena and I know what it's like to be in that horrible, 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 painful place of being a survivor. To not feel a lot of hope, to feel a lot of pain, to feel despair. And so one of the things that we want to do besides empower you with education is empower you by giving you tips and strategies to implement today. Not pie in the sky, not maybe when you feel a little bit better, you might be able to do this. Nope. Today, start doing this. You'll feel better. Um, these are the things that we have learned in our recovery, um, that we have learned as coaches, that I learned as a therapist, that we know have a proven track record that are going to help you feel better now. So, um, Athena, do you have anything else to add before we start tackling that one page? Um, I don't think so. I think I have, um, I have just, I probably want to share something later on when we're in the middle of the one page, um, regarding like the different layers of the showering, not, okay. layer, not that showers are in different layers. That's not what I mean. I mean, the different layers of reasons 
why showering, showering is, is hard, is complicated and is challenging. Complicated. Yes. And, um, and I know that there are some people that will probably really relate with this because when I started to mention it briefly during chat, it was like a, you know. So. Yes, a light bulb moment for a lot of people. It was. I got some private messages. And then I also will probably add, um, Jack has uh, mentioned, he wants us to touch on the fact, I just got the message right now, just a couple seconds ago. Um, his abuser used hygiene as a tool for abuse. And I can resonate with this, and I can identify with this very, very deeply. Um, yeah. And what he, what he means in quotes, because um, I asked him to elaborate more specifically so that we could share if possible. Um, thank you, by the way, Jack, for elaborating. I just got the tweet. And what, what his abuser would say is, if you do X, Y, Z, various hygiene practices, no, if you don't do X, Y, Z, right. like if you don't shower, brush your teeth, da, 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 no nice girl is ever going to want you. So basically shaming, like shaming right. him into, um, shaming him into bathing and taking care of himself. Yeah. Um, so, and mine was absolutely the opposite, which I will share later in the middle of our one page. Okay. And just, just for all, everyone who's watching or listening, we want to remind you that these episodes can be very triggering. And if you are very triggered, if this is not a healthy thing for you to listen to right now, please go ahead and shut this off. We don't want you um, to be dangerously triggered by any of this. We'll be here on YouTube, on Roku TV, anytime. You can come back and watch the rest of the episode. But please go ahead, feel free to click off. Um, we want to remind you that our incredible friends at Rain um, have both a 24-7 chat feed Feature on their website at rain.org and they also have a 24 7 hotline so if you're in crisis you can contact them at 1-800-656-HOPE I would give you the numbers but I don't know the numbers that correspond with H-A-O-P-E and my phone <laughs> no Wait, longer tells me what they are H-O-P-E let's see it is I wonder if it also do the keypad oh here we go so rain.org is 1-800-656-4673. There you go. So I hope I remember you, that. <laughs> yeah. I won't remember that. I won't remember that. I won't, I won't remember it either. <laughs> I won't. Um, if I wrote it down, I would. But 4673, 4673. Okay. <laughs> so please feel free to, you know, turn this off, um, take care of yourself. And I will not recommend a bubble bath. I talked about that this morning, how people always, you know, when you're talking about relaxation strategies and they're always saying, oh, go take a bubble bath. Um, no. Bubble yeah, baths are not highly everybody. triggering for me. <laughs> not everybody, not everybody likes no. bubble baths people okay yeah. not everybody is like my husband will say that why don't you light a candle and take a bath and it's like yeah you don't understand that's not something that really helps me oh my gosh <laughs> so okay yes so um i'm gonna go ahead and put the one page up and we'll all take a look at it together while you do that i just want you uh -huh. to know how awesome it is to be in your house <laughs> okay let's see here. oh wait Ah, uh, small amounts. Okay, present to everyone. And now I'm going to go make it big, big, big. Because you're awesome. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, Self-care and personal hygiene, one page. And I would like you all to know that it is always I before E except after C. I learned that very well the last couple of days typing everything out about hygiene. Um, so the reason that we are typically um, uncomfortable with hygiene, have struggled with hygiene, is usually a combination of many of these explanations. And like many aspects, 
of trauma and trauma recovery. It's not typically one reason. It's many reasons. It's complicated. It's interwoven. It's in layers, like Athena talked a little bit about earlier. So several of these are probably going to resonate with you. And again, uh, the first one is we're uncomfortable with and sometimes even hateful of our own bodies because they were an integral part of our abuse. And this, this is one that I didn't talk about earlier. We don't find ourselves valuable enough to take care of. Um, go ahead, and Athena. That oftentimes that is subconscious. I mean, we don't consciously say, I'm not valuable enough to take care of. But subconsciously in our minds, we are actually somehow, um, like there's this silent weird tape that plays as background music to everything else that we do that just reminds us that we're, we're this or we're that, we're not enough, we're not skinny enough, we're not thick enough, we're not tall enough, we're not short enough, we're not whatever, fill in the blank enough. And then that translates into, uh, yeah, I do not want to see myself naked. Right, I'm not worthy. Um, and you know, interestingly, along that same way, um, sometimes we don't realize how low an opinion we have of ourselves because we've had it our entire lives. Um, Athena and I are both survivors of very early age trauma, um, all going all the way up, you know, into our teens. And there's not a point where I could tell you that I ever remember feeling good about myself. So up until I really started to work on my recovery, I had no clue that the kind of self-esteem I had, the low self-esteem I had, was as low as it was and was different from everybody else's because I had, it's what I always had. Um, it was my status quo. It was my temperature set point. And so, yes, Athena's right. We don't often, we're not consciously aware sometimes of how lowly we value ourselves. And we're certainly not saying, I'm not going to take a shower today because I don't value myself. No, it, it, it is more subconscious than that. Um, sometimes we are triggered by things that involve touching our bodies and especially our unclothed bodies during sh showering, bathing, and dressing. And this can be just really a huge issue for people and very triggering. Additionally, we may have been abused while bathing or showering. So that experience itself, um, we have flashbacks, we dissociate, um, you know, we, we just flat out remember. It may not be a flashback, it may just be an awful memory that we associate with bathing or showering. And please, like we talked about earlier, don't shame yourself if these things um, are an issue for you. First of all, because you don't deserve the shame, okay? Your abuser, it, it's their fault that you're dealing with what you're dealing with. And the after effects are not your fault. Neither the abuse nor the after effects are your fault. So there's no reason at all for you to feel any shame. And second, shame, unfortunately, can be um, at the place where we start, when we start to feel that shame, it starts to spiral us downward because shame sends us into low self-worth, which goes to self-loathing, which goes to more shame, and it becomes uh, a nasty downward spiral. But the reality is we, des we deserve grace and understanding. Um, we've always deserved it. It's our birthright. Uh, we just probably haven't gotten a lot of it yet. But that ends now. Um, come here every week, listen to us, watch more episodes. We promise you that we will give you as much encouragement to give yourself grace and understanding. Now, some of these challenges about personal hygiene and self-care will just resolve themselves as you do your healing work. Others are going to require that you directly focus on them to correct them. So, for example, say um, you typically have flashbacks and dissociate while you're showering. 
as you do your healing work, perhaps especially as you do some EMDR, that's just going to dissipate. But some other things, so for example, um, I don't like to wear clean clothes, I don't like to change my clothes, but every couple of days, because I don't feel good about myself, you know, you may have to undo, it may have become a habit that you're going to have to undo and consciously work at that. But either way, none of these are givens that you're going to struggle with them forever. So know that there's hope. Know that it's just a matter of work, not just a matter. I know that that sounded that sounded very minimizing. It is a matter of working on your recovery, um, hopefully with safe people, with your therapist, with your coach, um, whoever it is that helps you to sort through these particular issues. So until it's an appropriate time in your recovery, to address either of those options, meaning to work on your healing so they're not an issue, or to directly address perhaps a habit that was set up because of our feelings about ourselves. Here are some tips to help you establish the healthiest possible self-care and personal hygiene. Um, so Athena, just jump in. Uh, I think maybe what we'll do is We'll talk about that after the second bullet point. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Or do you want to jump in now? Um, no, I think what I will, when I will, um, down on the fourth one where it says if baby okay. empowering is difficult. Okay. I'll, Let's I'll, do that. I'll, or even, um, yeah, either there or the last bullet point. Okay. Um, so the first thing that we want to recommend is that you limit or loosen your expectations for personal hygiene. Okay, there are things that you just are going to have to do every day, like brushing your teeth and applying deodorant. They're just, you got to do them. As my psychiatrist tells me, sometimes there are just things that you got to do no matter how you feel. Um, but there are other things, such as showering every day, or maybe washing your hair every day, that previously you've had that expectation for yourself that you can loosen that or let go of that a bit. It's okay um, to only shower every other day, to only wash your hair every fourth day, um, to only shower every third day. As long as you are taking care of other aspects of your body, those are fine. And so change your expectations so that you don't get wrapped up in the shame of not meeting expectations which simply aren't realistic right now. Um, for those activities that you can have some flexibility, it might help you to set up a schedule. For example, on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'm going to wash my hair and shower. Um, you know, and it's interesting, I have talked to survivors who are okay with showering but not taking a bath or they're okay with taking a bath but not with showering and usually that has to do with the fact that they were abused during one or the other of these um, or for example when I was a child we didn't have a shower and all we had was a bathtub and we bathed um, and yes, there were some incidents of abuse that surrounded my using my bathing in a bathtub. And so I don't like to bathe in a bathtub. I like to shower. I don't have flashbacks. I don't dissociate when I shower. But again, <laughs> sitting in a bubble bath is never going to be anything that I can envision being relaxing for me. And that's okay. That's fine. You, you don't ever have to embrace that. As long as you're getting clean um, in the shower or some other way that works for you. And then identify activities that are usually triggering and result in flashbacks or dissociation. Devise a strategy to cope with those, such as playing music while you're in the shower and focusing on the songs rather than what's going through your head. And again, the whole reason that we focus on things around you, listening to a song, um, seeing something that's around you, we're trying to get you out of your head 
and when you're not in your head, when instead you're firmly rooted in the world around you, then the dissociation is impossible and the flashbacks will markedly decrease. So set something up so that while you're doing something where you typically dissociate, you have an activity that keeps you grounded in the world. And then again, if bathing or showering is difficult because it involves you being naked, which for many of us can be very triggering in and of itself, consider wearing a swimsuit. I have clients that do that all the time, and they're, it helps. So if that would help for you, um, then please, by all means, uh, knock yourself out because you're still getting clean, I promise. And if wearing a swimsuit is what allows you to tackle that shower or that bath, then I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, Athena, do you want to share your experience in this particular aspect? I think I hygiene? should. I, I think I should, and I think I should maybe look at the camera, and then we can go back to. Is oh, that okay? Oh, is that absolutely. I must push I the right I button. I didn't think about that until just now. Um, I was actually tweeting, Brenda, you can go ahead and start monitoring tweets. I've been retweeting everybody. Brenda is actually here um, supporting us, and, and she's listening in. I don't know if she can see us or not, but if you can, I'm waving to you, Brenda. We love you. Um, and um, Simi has been tweeting out as well. So has Melissa. We have such an, this is the most active Twitter stream we've had during a live Google Hangout slash YouTube slash Roku. So you guys are just amazing. You continue to amaze me every week. So what I wanted to share with you guys, um, this is kind of when I get a little bit raw and real. And so again, I want to um, preface this obviously with if I am, if I, what I'm saying right now is going to um, trigger you or if you notice that your mouth is dry your hands are sweaty or your heart rate is elevated Just press pause come back later. No worries, and then I'll know I just want to then I'll know you guys are okay, so um, Okay, so what I wanted to share with you guys is that there could be layers to your aversion to self-care or personal hygiene and I say that just because I have layers and if I have layers I'm not a special snowflake. That means there's hundreds and thousands of people out there that have the same issues, okay? So here we go. Issue number one, layer number one. Um, when I was very, very, very young, probably around seven years old, one of my mom's second, third, third, her third husband would invite his neighbor friends over and their daughters and they would make us bathe together and they would yell disgusting comments at us and we did things to each other in the bathtub that were sexual and i didn't know that they were sexual because i was seven <laughs> seven picture a seven-year-old in your mind i think brenda might even have a seven-year-old and just picture i don't know second grade disgusting so Okay, bath, yelling disgusting things, that's scary. Okay, that's layer number one. Layer number two is um, my abusers and other abusers, I have multiple, multiple, multiples, um, they would bully me. And part of the way they would bully me is by making fun of me that I would take too long to bathe. Um, it was too long like, in their opinion. Too long in their opinion to bathe. Right. And, I, I mentioned during um, UK chat this morning, it was kind of that whole like out damn spot. Like, of course I'm gonna bathe for a really long time. I'm trying to like scrub my skin raw to get the disgustingness off of me from being right. sex sexually abused at a very young age when I'm a child. Right. So of course I'm wanting to like scrub off all the bad stuff. Or, and then when I noticed that I was starting to like a little bit older than seven, obviously probably closer to like 11, um, I noticed that I was starting to get hairs and so I would like try to pluck them all out or or um, Or like scrub them off or do something to them because they freaked me out because I knew that all of the pornography that I was forced to watch at, at, From a very young age whether it was videos tapes the VHS tapes that they would that they would bring um, or the calendars that would hang on the wall in the garages or the naked girl magazines I knew that every one of those people that was doing all of those disgusting things, they all had hair. 
And so I didn't want to have to do more disgusting things. So I didn't want my hairs. Like I wanted to like get rid of the hairs, you know, I didn't at that moment realized, duh, they're abusing me because I don't have hair and they're crazy and they have pedophilia and they want me to be young. Like I didn't, couldn't ask that I was a child. So that's layer number two, the bullying and the screaming, you're taking too long, you're taking too long. And to this day, I still have a family member that I have healthy boundaries with and she used to yell at me and yell at me and yell at me. And still to this day, as a 40 year old woman, if I were to bathe at her home, she would say, um, mas rapida, hurry up. Um, you know, tick tock, tick tock. Come on, do a figure eight, turn around and get out. Don't be in there so long. Like it's, I'm not allowed to bathe for more than just a few minutes. And if I do, it's sort of like laughed about, like I'm just laughing, stuff, which is pretty normal. So, um, again, more layers. And then as if those layers are not enough, you add on all of the other layers that we have already talked about, which are our bodies were used as things. They were used to please people. They were currency. They were traded for things. They were exploited. They were touched. They were abused. They, bad things happened to our bodies. Our mouths, like, like Bobby was saying, oral sex, if you're forced to do oral sex, or just things that happen to our bodies. So of course we have this relationship with our body that is very um, love and hate. Like, I know that my body is, you know, I'm, I'm a good, I, I'm, I'm a good person, right? I have a good body. My body's okay, right? But then you hate your body because it was, if I didn't have my body look just like this, then maybe they wouldn't have done that to me. And you sort of try to unbake the cake and unravel it all the way back. And it just never works. So there are just so many different layers as to why showering, bathing, being clean, personal hygiene, all of it going all the way back to the end, the core, which Bobby and I always talk about, the core, 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 and that is I'm bad. I'm obviously I'm bad because or I'm not worth it. I'm not worth taking care of. Again, these are subconscious things or whatever. But the layers that happen when someone in your family or a close person near you, um, anything regarding the bathroom, you guys. I mean, whether, whether you were violated and yelled at when you were, getting, when you were going to the restroom, relieving yourself, um, eliminating whatever you want to use, you're pooping, whatever. Um, everybody poops. So if you were yelled at or what took you so long, what are you doing, reading War and Peace, blah, 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 why are you taking so long? Any, anything that is like shaming you for doing something natural, it is a normal bodily action. Yeah, you begin to to take out that out on your body, and it's not your body's fault; it's their fault. But you don't know that. So layers and layers and layers and layers. What were you going to say, Bobby? Cut right in. Come on. I was going to say when um, I reached puberty, and um, I started to have my period. One of my family members used to come in the bathroom and watch um, me take care of it, whether it was you know usually with a pad, just to stand there and stare at me and just watch. Um, no lock on the bathroom door. If there had been a lock, we probably wouldn't have been able to allowed to use it. And I developed so much shame around a, a natural body function for all women. But they, I don't, they just stand there and just stare at me and make me feel so horrible about something that I couldn't control. Um, yeah. Awful. And they, what, what did they say to you when you needed them to go to the market to get something? I used to get teased when I would need to go to the market to get something for my monthly cycle. I got the same exact thing you did. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember that. I, I think because I had an older sister, you know, those always just kind of appeared in the house. I don't even remember having to ask for them. Um, I just remember this person coming into the bathroom and literally standing there um, staring at me and the horrible shame that I felt over something that was completely normal. Um, yeah. yeah, no wonder we struggle, eh? Yeah, there's layers and layers and layers. And you guys, I wanted to let you know that the song thing, the music thing, when I shower, it totally works. It usually doesn't work if I have like random Pandora stations playing, but I have one particular CD that I love to listen to. and. I can time my shower perfectly at like 12 minutes 
if I listen to this particular CD because it's like a perfect three songs that I know that I can like, oh, by the time the second song starts, I should be doing that. And, and like I've, you know, tried to train myself, which I know that sounds ridiculous that I even have to think about it like that, but I disassociate horrifically when I shower you guys really bad. Like I will be in there for 45 minutes and not even know it because I'm so in five, 12 other places. It's horrible. So I have a CD that I have timed or whatever. And if I do play like a Pandora channel, I try to count three songs, but sometimes I just split, go off somewhere else. I don't even mean to, but the shower and the bath are when I have, uh, when I disassociate. Other than that, I'm usually, usually fully present, almost always, but when, but bathing, nope, can't do it. And people are just tweeting like crazy right now. Um, Stacy, Jack, Simi, Brenda, um, you know, so many people agreeing. There's layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of things. And um, we don't feel worth it. We feel dirty. We feel bad. We feel shame. We feel conflicted. Um, Brenda brings that up. We're so conflicted about our own selves from the abuse um, because we, we think that, you know, it must have been our fault. I really identify what, what you said earlier, Athena, that somehow if I had been different, if my body had not looked the way it looked, I wouldn't have been abused, which of course is complete nonsense. But especially as children, we have to remember, and I really want you guys to understand that the feelings that we have about ourselves and as after effects of our abuse, those are feelings you developed. Those are thoughts that you developed when you were a child. And so they come from a child's reasoning and a child's logic. Of course, if I say to someone who has no concept of ever being abused, um, I feel like if my body had been different, I would have been abused, they would probably look at me and go, really? Um, surely you don't really mean that. That makes absolutely no sense. But I developed that feeling and that belief when I was a child. And so, yes, it has a child magical thinking behind it. Um, as a child, I'm going to naturally blame myself because for me, my abuser was a family member. If I admit that my family member who's supposed to protect and take care of me has horribly horribly done things to me, then I have to think that I am completely unsafe in this world. And I can't do that. I just, I cannot be unsafe as a child. And so I blame myself. And that thought, that belief was set in my personality, hardwired into my brain when I was a child. And for anyone who was abused over a period of time, usually several years, when you were young, you know, at, probably up until about the ages of eight. So if you were abused like between the ages of four and eight for a period of time, that's when our personalities form. Those beliefs become set in your personality. I understand I'm 49 years old. Truly, the fully professional functioning part of me knows that how my body looked had Zippo to do with my abuser and his choices. But that belief is still powerfully motivating behind my thoughts and feelings about my body. Even if it's not conscious all the time, it's there, it percolates, it causes me to make decisions and think thoughts. Not as much as it used to, because I've been in recovery for a while. But that doesn't mean that it's, it's completely gone away. It's still there. It percolates. It bubbles. Um, it reminds me, hey, something wrong with you. You're not worthy. You're not worthwhile. Don't forget that. Whatever you do, never forget. You're not good. You're bad. You're bad. You're bad. So um, I understand that as adults, it might seem silly to say those things, but you believed that. You formulated that belief as a child. So I don't want you to beat yourself up because it would seem perfectly illogical now for you to still believe that. I get it. It comes from a child's magical thinking, so please don't beat yourself up. And I hope that you have a greater understanding of why you believe what you believe and you know 
that um, it's not shameful. Okay, I want to go back to the one page and wrap that up. I'm looking at the time. I know we're at about an hour. Um, I think this is it. It looks different than when I looked at it before. <laughs> That's it. Okay. <laughs> it looks perfect. I'm pushing I buttons. Think it's, pushing I buttons, think it's buttons. like we're like farther down maybe, huh? Yeah. Hang on. Let me. Okay. Here we go. Um, the next bullet point is to try to ensure that you have as much privacy as possible during those times when you have to be unclothed. Install locks on your doors, or if you can't do that, and we can't always do that, put a sign on your door. This is, please knock before entering. Knock and wait for me to say it's okay to come in. Um, it's perfectly acceptable to do that. And that's a way to get some privacy. I know that locks are our friends. And I certainly hope that if you don't have a lock on your door, that you can install one. Um, because it certainly does help us to feel safe, especially for those of us who are not allowed to have locks as children. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, you know, and had Zippo and a bucket privacy. And the last one is, if bathing is difficult, okay, which hopefully by now you know we get, I struggle with it myself, um, use a long-lasting deodorant. <laughs> and a trick that I have learned is use baby wipes. Um, I, I understand it's still touching yourself, but it's not the whole bathing experience. So use baby wipes to wipe yourself up and make sure that, um, you know, you have a semblance of clean. Um, so that's just a little tip there from things that I've learned. Above all, and truly, honestly, you guys, above all, be kind and gentle with yourself. While you may not initially have understood the connection between your child abuse and your struggles with hygiene, know that you are not alone and there are good reasons for why you're resistant to the activities. Work on healing your trauma and you will find it getting easier and less challenging. So there we go. And again, that sheet is available on our website. Um, go to traumarecovery.com. There's a tab that says downloadables. Oh, and Trauma Recovery click. University. TraumaRecoveryUniversity.com. Sorry, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I just don't know what TraumaRecoveryUniversity.com is, but I don't, I don't think it's us. And but I don't think you can get our pages there. They're probably super awesome, though. Right. <laughs> Whoever they are. <laughs> And we have a downloadable sheet for every episode that we've done, um, except for the first one, which I'm still working on, I promise. Um, I mean, we have, just scroll down, find anyone that you need to, print it off, it's yours. Um, we want you to have them, print them off, put them in a binder, so that when that particular issue arises, you have information. And um, we just would really encourage you to, to go ahead and do that. If you're listening to us on a podcast, um, please know that you can see what we've just been talking about, what we've been reading through, following through, by going over to the website, clicking on downloadables, and finding it and printing it out. So it'll be there waiting for you. It's not going anywhere. Oh, um, I have something that was just tweeted out by one of our peeps. Um, she wants to know, um, does anyone clean themselves too much? And then she says, I'm, hide I'm hiding now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had that, we had that this morning. We yeah. had many people that talked about, I can't, like you said, that Macbeth quote, out damn spot. Yes. You know, trying to clean I, yourself. You know what? You can't it's get rid too. of the dirty. It's me. You you're can't. not alone. <laughs> yes. Yes. That I can't get rid of it. Um, you know, I can sit in the shower for the next 12 hours and I will never feel clean again. So yes, 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 yes. You're and not alone. Rachel Thompson writes about that. She has a specific chapter of her book or a certain piece in her, but maybe it's poetry or something, but she writes about how we, we will, we just, no matter how much we clean ourselves, we'll never be clean again. Like, 
I, I forget the name of the piece, so forgive me, Rachel, I'm so sorry, but I know that she writes about it. So um, you're not alone. If you struggle with hygiene, you are not alone. Whether you're an abuse survivor, which probably you are if you're listening to this or whatever, but or watching this, but you're just you're just not alone. You're not alone, and maybe you have some abuse that you didn't even remember until just now, and if that's the case, please reach out and let us know. I'm having memories. What do I do? What are the first steps of recovery? Who should I reach out to? Can I be a member of your group? Um, I think I'm having a breakdown. Help me, help me, whatever. But please reach out to someone. And like we said earlier in our broadcast, if um, this is an emergency and you are having memories and you are just, you're spinning right now because you can't believe that you are however old you are and you are just now remembering and it must not be real because it's been 20 years, it could be real. And if that's the case, please reach out to one of us. If we're not available at the very first moment you try, reach out to our friends, our friends at rain.org. <laughs> Bobby, I'm going to try, I'm going to try the phone number, but go to rain.org. They have an awesome chat feature, or you can dial 1-800-656-HOPE, which is 4673, maybe. <laughs> 4763? Wait, let me look. I feel so bad. Hold on. It's I told you I would not remember. 40 Numbers. 4376. 4376. There we go. 800 656 4376. Ooh, we rhymed. Okay. So, you guys, we are so proud of you. It takes so much courage to watch this broadcast and to listen to us yes. and make it through all of our antics. And again, like we've had to say previously on some broadcasts, if you don't particularly care for our style because we're a little bit too silly about the, such a serious subject, we might not be for you. And this is our channel and you don't have to watch. But with all due respect, we love you. We're glad you're here. We just love to communicate with you and be real because guess what? No matter how many times you've been abused or for no matter how long you've been abused, no one can live their entire lives completely dead serious and speaking monotone and taking themselves too seriously and never laughing and putting people to sleep and being miserable because that's just not us. Sorry. We're going to choose to have joy and live great lives and reach our potential no matter what. And that's all I have to say. I went on a little bit of a rant there, but end rant. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and talk about ways that you can contact us. Um, yeah. I think the one that I have <laughs> just disappeared. <laughs> Whoa. Well, that's, that's okay. That's okay. Why don't we just read it out? So you guys, we, we are running a little bit over time today. We love you. If you would like to see our contact information and not just hear it, then stay tuned and keep watching. Otherwise, we're just going to tell you right now, if you're driving, you can always just look for Athena Moberg or Bobby Parrish. You can Google us, and you can definitely find this broadcast. But um, I'm at Athena Moberg on Twitter. Bobby is at Truth is Hers on Twitter. Um, we both have business Facebook pages. Bobby's is Bobby Parrish Coaching and Consulting. And her private one is Bobby.Parish. My professional page on Facebook, if you would like to like me, if you would like to like me, um, it is Athena Moberg fan page. Or my private one is my full name, Dawn, D-A-W-N, Athena Moberg. And um, you can always private message us, tweet us. Um, dust us on Cyberdust. She's at Bob. She's plus sign Bobby Parrish. I'm plus sign Athena Moberg. You can find us on the popular page. Um, reach out. Ask us to be a part of our private secret groups, and you will have instant support from awesome, amazing survivors just like you and just like us. And we are usually in there providing support as often during the week as we possibly can when it's humanly possible. And um, Bobby's email address is Bobby. L Parish at yes. gmail.com. <laughs> and Bobby I Parrish am taken. Yeah, Bobby Parrish. There's another Bobby Parrish out there, but she's obviously not as cool as you. We are just getting <laughs> tweets. I mean, my computer is going crazy. It's like tweet, tweet, tweet. Everybody's tweeting. Oh my goodness, this is the most 
we're going to have to do a course or something on this, you guys. Like we're, we're launching a whole bunch of paid products. And if you want this to be one of our paid products because you want more in-depth information or whatever, can you let us know what topics you would like us to, to discuss? Um, I'm on emails, though. So Bobby is bobbylparish at gmail.com. I am Athena at athenamoberg.com. Oh, and Diana, or is it Diane? I'm not sure which it is, Diane or Diana. I've been emailing back and forth with you, but I haven't heard from you, so I hope you're okay. Send me another email and let me know you're okay. I know that your husband asked you or um, encouraged you to reach out to me, so let me know. Um, and then, Bobby, why don't you let all of our beautifuls and rock stars know um, the times and dates of our um, weekly live broadcasts, Twitter chats, Roku TV show, yada, 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 all the really cool, awesome stuff that we have going on. Absolutely. We have two Twitter chats. Um, the original Twitter chat is Tuesday evenings. It's at 6 p.m. Pacific time. The hashtag is sex abuse chat. That is the chat that Rachel Thompson and I started in January of 2014. Um, and if you're in the UK, that's two o'clock Wednesday morning. Um, and then after we had quite a few people in the UK who wanted a Twitter chat along with um, Susan shiny blue dress on Twitter started up a Twitter chat on Mondays and that is at um, 10 a.m. Pacific time and 6 p.m. UK time Greenwich Mean Time so that hashtag is CSAQT which means child sexual abuse question time and you are welcome to join either one. You're welcome to join both. And then our Google Hangout is every Monday evening at um, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 a.m. in the UK. We have the same topic from um, Monday through, tw through Twitter chat and Google Hangout and then through the Twitter chat that's on Tuesday. And we do that intentionally because things evolve and change as the week goes on. So believe it or not, you are absolutely not going to hear the same things that you hear on Monday if you come to the Twitter chat on Tuesday. So it's please feel free. It's a completely different chat. I can't tell you, I can't stress how different the dynamics are on our Monday UK chat and our Tuesday US chat. I, the 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 topics are the same, but the the minds and the lives and the 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 situations and just the the events that have transpired over different people's lives, the conglomerate of, of groups of both chats, they're they're drastically different, but all on the same thread. So um, I learn from every single person there whether it's on a Monday or a Tuesday or, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal, the, um, the interaction and the minds and just how different everyone's lives are. It's just, it's, it's amazing. So sorry to cut you off, but I just had to like, I had to just definitely give you, give you a little amen there. Okay. And if you don't want to participate, but you just want to watch Twitter stream, that's absolutely fine. We have, believe it or not, we have a lot of people who do that so you're welcome to do that or um, after every chat I use an, a web service called Storify and you can go to storify.com look for me truth is hers and I use that to create a transcript of every Twitter chat so you can go back and read um, a year's worth of Twitter chat transcripts if you want to and that will help you get some information on a topic that you might have missed. Um, we do repeat some topics, especially ones that are very popular. So if you have an idea for a topic, please tweet it to us, email it to us, um, just let us know. And every topic that we do, we get because it's something you guys tell us you want to hear about. And then you can always watch these episodes on our YouTube channel or on Roku TV. Just search for Trauma Recovery University and you will find them all there. I think that's all I have. Awesome. Well, we're so grateful for you guys. Like we always say every single week, you guys are the reason we do this every week. And 
the topics we discuss are given to us by you. So uh, we are going to be um, looking at our editorial calendar and uh, blocking off the next several weeks. And we have some paid products that are launching. We have some live events that are coming up. And uh, we just would love to hear what topics you want to discuss and you want us to research and share what we found with you. So uh, don't be shy. Email us, tweet us, Facebook us, dust us. Um, we just absolutely love you guys. We appreciate you. We value each and every one of you. And you are just as much of this broadcast as we are. So thank you and see you next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>